Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Clary Slim. Today, I'm going to touch on a P4 topic, light. Okay, it's relatively simple. There's only a few concepts that you need to memorize. So this video is more of to prepare you for your exams to teach you exactly the keywords to use in order to answer the short uh, answer questions in section B. Okay, because a lot of students don't know how to answer um, the keywords and present the keywords so that they gain their points. So this video is designed just that. So I'll run through some of the key points first for this topic and then we'll show you some example questions. All right. Okay, so what are the sources of light? You will need to know sources of light. Natural sources of light includes the sun and the fireflies. Okay, the man-made ones will be the candles and the bulbs. What are reflectors? Reflectors are uh, anything that reflects light. Anything that we, get, that we can see, in fact, reflects light. Okay, so the natural one will be the moon, reflects the light from the sun, therefore we can see the moon. Otherwise, a perfect reflection will be a mirror, a clear mirror. Perfect reflection because we can actually see ourselves clearly through the mirror and other many, many more things. As long as you can see it, means it reflects light. Just like you are looking at me now, I'm reflecting light. The screen is reflecting light onto your eyes, therefore you can see, right? So we can see objects because light is reflected off the objects into our eyes. That's how we can see. Right? So good reflectors are smooth, shiny and white objects just like this. If it's a smooth surface, it's most likely white. If not, it is very smooth. If not, it is very shiny because it reflects light directly, cleanly into our eyes. But bad reflectors are rough like this jagged surface. It is dull. It is black because it diffuses the light everywhere and it makes the color turn out dark and black or rough to our eyes okay because of the incomplete or the diffused light reflection right so degrees of transparency is affected um, through these three different types of uh, uh, material on how much light can pass through so opaque objects describes items that doesn't allow any light to pass through that means they are completely non-see-through no light passes through means you cannot see through it Translucent allows some light to pass through, so you can slightly see through it. Transparent object allows most light to pass through. Okay, so transparent uh, meaning, for example, glass. Okay, so if you put a glass door, you can completely see what's going on inside. If you put frosted glass, most likely you cannot see everything very clearly. You can maybe see some shadow, so those are translucent. Okay, so if it's opaque, it'd be completely like a wooden door, metal door, that's completely opaque. No light can pass through, you cannot look in, right? Another thing you need to know uh, in this chapter is that light travels in a straight line, okay? Why does light travel in a straight line is important? is because we need to know how shadows are formed. So if light travels in a straight line, shadows are formed by having light blocked. Okay, so if you put an item in front of this light source, if it's very near to the light source, you form a big shadow because light travels in a straight line. So as you draw this light going upwards, being blocked, the, the light is being blocked. The rest of the light over here is being blocked by this object. Therefore, there is a darkness, there's a dark spot behind this object when light, even it is in front of the light. But if you move the item nearer to the screen over here, you will notice that the shadow becomes small because light travels in a straight line. The only part that is covered, the only light that is blocked by the object is straight away behind the object. Okay, to give you a better picture, let me show you a video over here. Okay, so in this video, the light source is over here. So the shadow is right behind this item, it's a small shadow over here. So as you see bigger, you look at my mouse, my mouse is where the shadow was just now. I didn't move anything, but the shadow now, because I moved this nearer to the light source, it became bigger. And now the shadow became smaller again. Okay, because it is far away from the screen, far away from the light source, the shadow becomes small. If it's nearer to the light source, the shadow becomes big. Okay, let's watch this again. So shadow is small, shadow is until here only. And the shadow goes bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes nearer the light source. Remember this video hard in your mind because it is a very common question that will be asked in the exam. As you move further away from the light source, the shadow becomes smaller again. Right? Very, very important video. Remember this. Now let's look at some questions. 
When Andy enters a dark room, he sees a candle flame at a corner as shown in the illustration below over here. So why is it that he can see a candle over there? So Andy can see the candle because it reflects, it gives off light, correct? Because the candle itself is a light source, right? So be, the reason why he can see it because it gives off light. That's the reason. And this light is reflected into your eyes, therefore you can see the flame directly. That's the answer. So when Andy switches on this light in the room, he sees both the candle flame and object B. So why is it that he can see object B? He could see object B because, very simply, it reflects light. That's the answer, right? So because it reflects light, it, Andy can see this object B. So object B, the light is reflected onto this and Andy might be standing somewhere here. So this light reflects onto this item into Andy's eyes. That's how it happened. So this is the answer, it reflects light. Anything that you can see means it reflected light onto your eyes. So in the experiment below, very, very common question in exam, they will always show you a light source, an object, and then a screen, exactly the video I showed you just now, right? So Javier placed an object between the light source and the white screen over here. So this is the object, and a shadow is formed. When there is a shadow, it simply tells you this object is opaque, right? It blocks light. And if it's a dark shadow, it is very opaque. It is completely uh, blocking light. If it's gray, usually these are how exam questions are, are, are designed. If it's gray, it is not a dark shadow. It is translucent. Okay, but usually the question will explain to you. If they don't draw anything here, which means this item is most likely transparent, right? It allows light to go through all the way. So there might be a frame around it. They might draw dotted lines around it to show you that it is actually transparent. There's no shadow forming. The table below shows part of the results of the experiment Javier conducted with the setup. She forgot to write down part of the results of the experiment over here. She forgot to write the result. So what should the results be? You see, the distance between the object and the screen gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So the distance gets longer and longer and longer, further and further away. What happens to the shadow? Remember just now, as the object goes nearer and nearer to the light source, which means it is further and further away from the screen just now, what happens to the shadow? It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, correct? So what is the order? of the height of the shadow x, y, and z in ascending order, which means how will they differ? Which one comes first? In ascending order means in increasing order. Very simply, it's just x, y, and z, right? Because you'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. Ascending order means bigger and bigger and bigger, so it's just x, y, and z. So what can Javier conclude between the object and the screen and the shadow from this experiment? That's why I said the video just now is very, very important because it's a very common question. The bigger the object, the bigger object had blocked all the light from reaching it. Sorry, wrong answer. It should be this one. Okay, the larger the distance between the object and the screen, the larger the shadow. Okay, put this in your mind. The, long, the larger the distance between the object and the screen, the larger the shadow, okay? Refer back to this video again, right? So as you pull the object in front, the larger the distance between the object and the screen, the larger the shadow. You see that? That's exactly what the question is asking you for. So let's look at the next uh, question. Javier added a clear plastic sheet between the light source Exactly the same experiment, but they have a clear red plastic sheet. If it's red, which means, and it's clear. It is red, but it's clear. So what happens is, what kind of shadow will you see over here? Remember, the object is still there, right? The object's black shadow will still be there, but this is clear. So some light can still pass through it. But what will be the color of the shadow? The color of the shadow will become red. It becomes a red shadow. Of course, if you are writing it in pencil, you can't, or, or pen, you can't uh, write. You, you, you can't color in red unless you have red pen or red color pencil, right? But you can shade lightly and then you can label, just say red shadow, right? That's all you can do. So this is what he will observe because light can pass through clear plastic sheet, but because it's red, the red color will tint the shadow. If a marble that is smaller than the object is placed between the object and the screen, which means the marble will be here between them, 
right? So the marble is smaller than this. That means it's hiding behind, isn't it? If it's hiding behind, can there be a shadow? Will you be able to see the marble at all? Of course not. So how do you explain that? No shadow will be cast on the screen by the marble. How do you explain that? Okay, this is when the answer just now I put, the bigger object, okay, which is the, the triangle, had blocked all the light from reaching the marble as so that a shadow cannot be passed. So what do you write over here? Where is the keyword? The light blocked the light. The light is blocked. Therefore, there is nothing reaching the marble. Therefore, no shadow can be cast. If you really want to, you can also say light travels in a straight line. Okay, because light travels in a straight line and because the big object has blocked all the light, there's no light that can reach the marble, therefore there is no shadow cast by the marble. Okay, so light travelling in a straight line will also guarantee that you got the keywords involved and you will definitely get the answer correct for one mark question. Okay, Harry had cardboards, okay, A, B and C, each with a hole but this one got no hole, so that means the light is actually prevented from traveling to C, isn't it? So, or rather, the candle, the light source is here. The light is prevented by B to travel to through A into Harry's eye. So, could Harry see the candle then? Of course not. Okay, so how do you explain this? Remember, children might just explain because B had blocked off the vision. Ah, is there any marks for that answer? Zero. Because you did not use the science concept to explain what is the science concept that you have learned in this chapter. What you have learned from this chapter is that light travels in a straight line. So you will need that keyword in your answer. So what will your answer look like? How will it look like? It will look like this. It will not be able to see because light travels in a straight line. You see the keyword over there and could not pass through cupboard B which has blocked the light. So this is the keyword, light travels in a straight line. You really need to memorize the keywords in order to score points for your science exam. Okay? The diagram below shows a maze with four entrances. Two boys, A's and Bravo, are standing at one entrance each. So how do you enable them to see each other? Very simple. So you take this mirror and you copy and paste, or rather, you just need to draw it here. Okay, I copy and paste. You just need to draw it there. Because why? This will allow reflection to happen because light travels in a straight line. The light source from over here, the environment, will go in, reflect onto this mirror. Light travels in a straight line, reflects upwards to this mirror, and this mirror reflect light over here to this. Therefore, they can see each other. So, you will place the mirror here to ensure that they can see each other. That's question, answer number A. Explain why they can see each other. So how do you explain it? How do you put it into words? Exactly what I've said just now. Light travels in a straight line, right? So light travels in a straight line. That will be the key words that you will need. This is the key point. Light is reflected in from one of them onto the mirror and then into another boy's eyes. So the reflection, this is another keyword. So two marks over there to explain this answer. Kevin was experimenting with the setup shown below to find out about shadows and the properties of light. So, this is the object from the side view. This is the object from the front view. So, this is the shadow formed on the screen. So, state the degree of transparency. So, just now I mentioned if it's grey, it's most likely translucent. If it's completely black, it is opaque, right? So, if it's C, clear, completely clear, that means it is transparent, right? So, that is the answer. So A is black, so it's opaque. B is translucent, some light can pass through. C is completely transparent. D is opaque again. So that will be your answer for A, B, C, D. Okay? Question B. Give an example of the materials that are described in A and B. So the answer can be anything. It can be metal, it can be wood, it can be porcelain. Doesn't matter, okay? As long as it's a material that you're writing that is opaque, that completely is blocked light, that will be your answer, right? So in this case, I can just write the answer as matter and I will get it right. What about B over here? B is supposed to be translucent. It allows some light to pass through. So you can name a lot of things. It can be tinted glass. It can be tracing paper. That really is up to you, all right? So let's go to another question here. Draw a shadow in the space below with reference to the position of the sun, all you need to ensure is that it is a straight line over here, from here to here, 
okay therefore this is how your answer should look like like this okay so what you need to do is uh, like I said just now ensure that it is a straight line so you imagine an imaginary straight line over here from here to here and so the shadow will be something like this cast on the floor okay the angle might look weird but if they have a floor for you they draw a straight line here for you for the floor you will need to paste it uh, uh, draw it accordingly okay but this is not art class don't worry your teacher will not penalize you because the angle is not correct to the uh, to the point okay so as long as the teacher understands that you understand the fact that the sun is blocking the light from the tree and the, the shadow is somewhere over here a little black patch over here you will get it correct all right so this is all for the exam questions that uh, that will surface for the light topic remember the keywords I will see you soon remember to click notify and subscribe to our channel bye bye